Hello and welcome to episode 37 of Establish the Collection. I am your host, Cody Main, joined as always by Gary Hartman, who is enjoying the waning moments of the NBA All-Star break before Thursday rolls around. Back to the basketball grind. Gary, how has the uh, short break been? How are you doing, buddy? You know, it's short, but it was like six or seven days, and I, I enjoyed it for a couple of days. But then tonight, I find myself watching college basketball. <laughs> I find myself watching the news. And if we don't, we're not going to get to politics on this show, but not a good night to pick the news. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm ready. Ready. Bring hoops back. Uh, so, you know, we're late Wednesday night. We got basketball back tomorrow. I'm excited on the live show tomorrow night. If you're not subscribed to our ETR NBA package, I don't know what you're doing, um, but really excited for, for NBA to, to uh, finish, you know, the last quarter of the season. We're like 70% through, despite the fact that we're at the uh, midway point. I feel like uh, this is a cry for help if you're watching college basketball oh, big time. Uh, big during time. Well, your during your break from let's basketball. Be real. This is this let's is be real. this is sad. I'm gambling on college basketball. Okay, okay, which then, is, then which, it, is, which is making me watch college basketball, but I uh, very <laughs> admittedly don't know really anything. Um, so got a beer with some friends tonight and was pretty much tailing their bets. Shout out to them. Thank you for some good picks uh, over the last couple nights. Uh, but yeah, I. I um, I'm learning a little bit now as I go here is I will try to successfully fill out some brackets in a couple weeks once March Madness is upon us. That's perfect. You don't know much about college basketball, but here you are trying. I am, am desperately, desperately trying to catch up on NBA and all of the NBA that I missed throughout the NFL season, mostly by tuning into you and Dink and Wiggins and, and all of the incredible people at the ETR NBA team. So hopefully you can help talk me through some NBA card markets today as I try and get up to speed. As I mentioned last week on the show, we promised that after the Super Bowl, we would start to turn our attention more towards NBA, uh, MLB hopefully coming. Obviously, plenty of F1 talk with the racing calendar just around the corner. But we, we'd be remiss if we didn't share our initial thoughts on the launch of the NFL all-day marketplace that officially took place yesterday, rolled into today as they worked through some of the initial kinks, but also... Uh, as much as we want to get a look at initial glimpse, uh, glimpses of valuations and, and what moments are doing after the uh, initial launch of the marketplace, we got pack. We got a pack to rip, Gary. Uh, we mentioned last week that there was going to be a standard pack and a premium pack drop. I got in. I got. I mixed it up in both. Was lucky enough to walk away with two packs. I ripped my standard pack because you guys don't care about that. But I've got a Super Bowl. Premium pack, ready to rip. These things have nine moments inside of them with one guaranteed rare or legendary moment as well. So I highly encourage you guys. I know this is mostly an, an audio visual, uh, an audio medium for you guys, not necessarily so much visuals going on. But if you haven't already, if you aren't watching on YouTube and you're listening to the podcast feed, go check out Establish the Runs YouTube feed, Establish the Collection. We're going to rip through this pack. Hopefully, you guys can get a feel of what these moments look like, and hopefully, we rip something pretty fun on the podcast here. And we've got some more visual stuff coming, uh, not not only on this show, but in the future as well. So highly encourage you guys to go check out the show on YouTube if you have not already. Without further ado, I've got the pack pulled up here, Gary. I'm going to share my screen, and I'm ready to do this thing if you are Dude, I'm pumped, man. I, I am jealous that you got your hands on one of these. Um, no luck for the queue with me. I just missed on, on both of these packs. Um, but, you know, we are, you know, I, again, I, my experience up to this point with All Day has been very positive. So let's pull, um, what are we looking for here? Like a, a Chase rookie legendary, uh, you know, something like that. Is it all Super Bowl guys? Like, is it Burrow and and Beckham and Cup, or is it from previous rounds also? I think we're hoping for like the legendary Aaron Donald, who we talked about, you know, one of these guys that's probably going to get more love on a platform like NFL all day than he would in the physical market, uh, Cooper Cup. I know there's legendary team melts, which is just like drives and, and moments clipped together from certain games for entire teams. I know that those have been done pretty well initially on the, uh, the first day of the market being open. Uh, but yeah, like I said, like you said, I think we're hoping for some of these premier rookies too, like Chase and some of these premier skill position guys that have these right. low mint counts like Cooper Cup uh, is definitely one of them. Matt Stafford, Joe Burrow guys that I would not be bummed to rip here. But let's let's see what kind of luck I've got let's with do my it, man. Good luck to you. All right. 
the audio if... coming through for you? Yeah, I hear it. All right, it's good actually deal. good because it's kind of right All in the right, background. Let's, uh, let's just start left to right. All right, let's do it. Oh, hey, shit. Hey, Mac Jones, we got a rookie. You got to like that. Rookie quarterback. You got to feel pretty good about that, I think. Absolutely. So what is that? I can't read the number there. It's out of 10,000. So that is a nine, yeah, 9,412 out of 10,000, which uh, as we'll get into here, we'll talk a little bit about the market. Uh, it's pretty interesting because there is not a standardized mint count for all mm -hmm. rookie debut moments. This is Mac Jones' debut moment. Um, but we'll see anywhere from 49, who Trey Lance's rookie debut moment is minted out of 49, and then all the way up to Mac Jones, who's his minute out of 10,000. So all right. well, <laughs> an interesting spectrum for uh, our like rookie debuts. You, but... you see some badges there? Yeah, which three is badge rookie here. This is the all-day debut, the rookie debut, and the rookie year. So kind of like we talk about on Top Shot, you know, you're really, really looking for these three badge rookies. Yep. Uh, not not go. a bad not a bad pull at all. Man. Not a bad start. Not a bad start. I'm feeling badge. really good. Okay. Feeling really good. Let's check out number two here. Well, I'm low gonna cereal. be really honest with you. I have no idea who Tavier Thomas <laughs> is. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> but he picked off Justin Herbert, and I think he takes it to the house. He does. That. And low cereal. Um, low cereal, 17 out of 6,000. I know a lot of right. people care about the uh, the low cereal accounts. That's This is also his all-day debut. But all right. shout Tavier. out to uh, Tavier I have Thomas. A, um, I have a feeling this will be his only all-day uh, <laughs> moment. But, you know, maybe Gary not. calling for a guy to get cut? <laughs> not that. But, like, are they even going to ever make another moment of this guy? I don't know. Maybe, listen, maybe he turns into freaking like Stefan Gilmore or something, and I'm just wrong, but you know, who knows? All right, let's see number three here. T.Y. Uh, T.Y. Hilton. All right. I am what I am technically a... still a Colts fan, uh, begrudgingly, but I, I don't know if this one I, gets I hear all this, me. this murmurings about Carson Wentz is, is a goner. Yeah, hopefully that, that is true. Hopefully the rumors <laughs> there are true. <laughs> Lil Jordan. Lil Jordan Humphrey, who, uh, if you played NFL Showdown at all this year, is a name that you should be familiar with. If you played NFL Preseason, is a name you should be familiar with. And maybe, maybe one day USFL fame, Lil Jordan Humphrey. I don't know how long <laughs> he is for the NFL, but uh, <laughs> another another moment out of 10,000. We'll take it. All right, so this has to be your big one coming up here, right? Well, we got nine of them. Oh, there's nine. There's oh man, nine. you know what? The the screen tricked me because I thought yeah, there's only five. See, look at how look at this bad boy. Wow. wow, that's a monster pack. It's like a fat pack. It is a fat pack. All right, the Super Bowl baby. Oh shit! This oh is shit! Good. This is a fifty out of eight eighty five hundred. Fifty out of eight eight thousand five hundred. That's good, man. You gotta like Super that. Super Bowl touchdown, Odo Beckham. Uh, unfortunately went down with the injury after the fact. Might have been Super Bowl MVP the way he was playing early on in that game. Absolutely. I like just that. Of, low low just, mint count, uh, number 50 out of 8,500. I think that's going to be a pretty hot moment. Yeah, what's that badge? Is that also just a debut? That is his championship, championship year. year badge. Okay, nice. So not his debut, but we get the championship year badge. There's our Super Bowl moment. I don't know if we've got any more in here. We'll we'll have to see, but that you got to feel good about that. We still, Absolutely. I don't think, have hit a rare moment. No, we have not. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, some Brian defense, Burns. All some right, defensive love, first uh, defensive first love. round pick from a couple of years ago. Oh, big sack so, on Josh Allen. Florida State, I think he went to. You might be right. All right, big sack on Josh Allen. Don't hate that. See, like I said, like the defensive guys are just going to do so much better on something like all day, where you can like see that in action. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Then then in the physical card space, I love that. Okay. Brandon Ayuk, the uh, the less sought after 49er receiver. Yeah, I think at this point he's just there. underappreciated. I mean, under, he, he had very, such a very roller, much underappreciated. Such a roller coaster season up and down. We'd imagine his quarterback situation is only going to improve over the next couple of years and we've seen what he could do. So I I'm an I'm an Ayuk buyer for sure. Love that. All right, let's see. We got two left, I believe. All right. Wow, hey, doubling, doubling up. up on little Jordan, duping on the uh, <laughs> little Jordan. All right, so this has to be the this has to be the big moment. This has to be the big here. boy here. All right, yep. All right, there he Looks is. Like we, we got see a the different, different color icon underneath the moment All right, itself. What get, All right, what are, what are we Let's actually go. hoping for? I think I think Drum I would roll, love a please. Jamar Chase rookie debut. Okay, yeah, I think I mean I think that or any kind of legendary quarterback. To legendary be quarterback really would be nice as well. All right. Yep. All right. 
Steelers. Okay, rare rookie Najee nah, Harris. It's a rookie. It's a You'll rookie. It's a debut. It's out of eleven ninety nine. Yep. You'll take that. That's All a right, three. We'll that's that. a three badge. Three badge rookie. Uh, rare rookie Najee Harris. So, hey, listen, that's not a bad one. I mean, we we've talked about the difference between you know running backs as opposed to wide receivers for skill positions, but we are, we are yet to see how that bears out on the top. Uh, sorry, on the all day marketplace. So not a terrible pack. I mean, you got the, the Odell in there, you got the Mac Jones, got the Najee. Uh, pretty good, uh, if I do say so myself. Yeah, fun pack. Mac Jones debut. We got the Odell number 50 out of 8,500 and then the Najee triple badge rookie rare moment, 1199. I, I kind of like that. Let's let's hop over. I'll stop sharing my screen here, but let's take a look at the NFL all day marketplace and just get an idea of where some of these moments are at. I looked at the rookie quarterbacks before we hopped on just to get an idea of where things had shaken out for them. And man, it, like I mentioned uh, during the pack rip, it is all over the place. So Mac Jones has a debut moment minted at, as you saw out of 10,000 before hopping on had a low ask of $109. Um, Davis Mills has a circulating count of 8,000. Uh, wow. So his is minted at 8000 low ask of $37. Then this is where it gets a little funky. Trevor Lawrence's debut moment is minted out of only $899, right? Low ask of $750, okay. which seems wow. relatively low given the uh, the low mint count on that moment. Right, totally. Zach Wilson uh, also minted out of, out of $10,000, just like Mac Jones. Then it gets really weird. Trey Lance's rookie debut moment is only minted out of $49. That is insane. So that's got to be r- way high up, right? So way high, right? So his low ask is $6,000 as of yeah. right now. Now, the thing to keep in mind, and, and Top Shot had a blog post earlier today about this, but not a lot of the moments have been circulated at this point, right? Right. So there's still, still a lot still in packs sitting in packs. So you're seeing pretty high low asks for these that I would expect over the next couple of days and weeks as Top Shot releases more moments to come down. Um, but man, like, this is going to be the lowest mint count of any, obviously, of any rookie quarterback in Top Shot's debut, or excuse me, All Day's debut, Series 1. You get a premier position, a premier player in what we think will be a premier offense, minted out of only 49. If that thing dips you know, lower than where it's at right now, I think that's an absolute smash buy for someone like Trey Lance. I don't know. What are your thoughts after? I, I don't disagree with you there. I mean, it's, it's hard to say with such a low pop count. I mean, it's just worth taking a chance because if he does, if he does go off, you know, once he does, you know, take the reins of that starting job, you know, that's going to be an undervalued card at that point. The other chance is it's a higher risk because you have to have, you have a higher entry point, but the, the pop count, keeps it where if there's enough, you know, 49, you know, if there's enough, did you say 49? Yeah, 49. 40, yeah, I mean, if, if that's, 49. yeah, it's actually not as risky as I would think. Cause you know, there'll be enough believers in him for a couple of years. The same way we still believe in Daniel Jones, right? There's right. going to be a couple of believers of him for a couple of years to the point where that's not going to be that risky of an investment, believe it or not. So, you know, if you have the, if you have the cash, I, I don't hate that, that buy. I really don't. It, I mean, it does kind of strike all the right notes that we think about in the physical market as well. And I, I tweeted this out, but right, you've got the, it's obviously a series one moment in a debut product for what we expect to be kind of the premier NFT platform for years to come with Dapper. Uh, it's a rookie who plays a premier position, the most sought after in collectibles from physical. And I think what we're seeing in early returns for NFTs as well, it's his rookie debut moment. You've got his peers minted to 10,000, 8,000, and his is out of 49. If he is the guy that's that excels from this class, and it might take some time, but if he is the guy that excels from this class or even puts him in a position, um, you know, as like a 1B to Trevor Lawrence or even totally. like a 1C to, you know, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence or whoever you may think comes out of this class as, you know, kind of the, the premier collectible option just seems like such a such an opportunity for big big upside obviously totally if it agree. flops obviously there is there is some risk there too but uh, I would wait for the entire supply to hit the marketplace there will certainly be people that are trying to under for buying for like, buying exactly you're selling I mean I was about to say I'm, I'm taking a look at your Najee right now yeah um, lowest ask 290 I mean that yeah. seems kind of high for me for a running back I mean, I get there's only 11.99. It's so hard to compare because we we're so accustomed to top shots. So like that right. circulation count seems really, really low. So if you are like really a Steelers fan or bullish on him as a you know one of the the, the best running back of the 2010s or something like that, then you know maybe not. But for me, while there's still I guess there's only 219 remaining in packs, so a lot of them is a lot of them are circulated. So it's an interesting spot for selling for buying. I'm probably waiting for it to settle in a little bit more. I agree with you. 
And and I highly suggest we've talked about own the moment previously, uh, wherever you may get your NFT information. I know Gary and I talk a lot about card ladder, uh, getting information for the physical world. But if you're looking for good data on whether, you know, whether you need to make a decision on buying or selling, I think OTM own the moment has the best information out there. Go to OTMNFT.com and you can really just search whatever you want. I pulled up the Odo Beckham moment, his Super Bowl moment, the one that I just pulled in that pack. 84% of that supply is in circulation. It's already been ripped from packs. It's already out there for everyone to buy. That's got a low ask of $40. I don't know what the 50 number 50 serial number will do um, for that moment. I don't know if I'm I'm really uh, intent on selling that thing right away or not. But just, just look at that. You can see that that moment, 84% uh, of the supply is in circulation. And then you look at his Series 1 debut, uh, that's got a mint count of 1,099, only 4% of that is in circulation. So again, as more of this supply enters the marketplace, I think you're going to see prices dip a little bit and then probably settle in somewhere in the off season once most of this Series 1 supply has been released. And then maybe we'll find kind of a good buying window as we head into next season. I don't know what you think about that initial thoughts. It's kind of the same thing that we have with physical cards though, right? Like the second that products are released and these first cards are getting ripped for these premier guys, you see massive, massive sales. Yep. And then as more of that supply floods the marketplace, it kind of settles in. So I think totally. we'll I mean, see a similar. Just to, you know, just to give a comparison right now, we're not talking baseball today or anything like that, but 2022 Top Series 1 Baseball just came out this week. And the first Wander Franco paper rookie that was slapped up by PSA 10 went for like 2,500 bucks. I mean, that's wow. stupid. They're, they're, wow. they're speculating like 150 thousand or 750,000 <laughs> circulation of that card. So, you know, that's like the same thing we saw. We saw this with Lamelo when the first of his stuff hits the market. Like that's, that is what's going to happen, you know, throughout all the major sports for sure. Uh, and that's why I say sell, sell right when you hit this stuff, especially for mid, mid and low products, right. you should sell the big rookies right away. Uh, one other guy I wanted to mention before we get too far in too, too far down the uh, NFL all day rabbit hole, we need to get we need to start talking some NBA because that's what the people are here for today. Uh, we did talk about that Tom Brady final TD pass potentially pulling some big numbers. Uh, we had a, a guy in the established the collection uh, discord channel pull that in a pack earlier this year. That one's actually another one. 88% of the supply is already in circulation. Uh, it's pretty awesome to see that that moment has a low ask of $2,900 nice. right now nice. uh, before the show. So I think that's a pretty that's a pretty good number for that card. I wouldn't actually expect to see a ton of movement in the short term on that up or down. I think it's kind of settled, settled in quickly after day one of the market being open. Um, on the other hand, the Tom Brady debut has a mint count of 10,000, a current low ask of $400, and still 50% of the supply sitting in packs. Yeah. Again, as, as I'm, top shot. I much prefer the buy of the 1,200 circulation yeah. last touchdown pass, for sure. We totally agree. We we'll totally yep. agree. Any other instant takeaways from the NFL all day marketplace? No, but I have. I, I'm liking this, and I like. Yeah. I like that I'm in. I was in this way earlier than I was for Top Shot, so I, I'm. I'm getting the itch a little bit here. Do we? We any news on the next pack? Because I'm. I'm ready to go. I want. I want some more. I, I have so. the, and this is kind of gonna uh, settle in some of the points that I've made just with supply. Um, we weren't in in week 13 when I think this all began, but look back on week 13 standard packs. Right, first release date was December tenth, twenty twenty one. They created this from fifty two thousand yeah. week thirteen standard packs. Only twenty six hundred have been sold. Only twenty three hundred mm. have been opened. Wow, there's still wow. fifty some thousand Holy just shit. week thirteen standard packs that are going to hit the market that are going to hit people's accounts. So there's still going to be a lot of them coming. Same situation with week thirteen premium packs. Nine thousand of those were created. Only 434 so, had been sold. Okay, so yeah, so you'll hear this by the time these come out, probably Friday yeah. afternoon, two o'clock and six o'clock Eastern for the week 13 um, replay drops for the standard and the premium. So that's exciting. I'm, I'll, I'll be on the, the queue for those. Point being, if you're if you're thinking about buying, just be careful about what you what it is that you're buying, and just be uh, understanding that a lot more of these NFL all day moments are about to hit the marketplace. Yep. So if you want to wait, uh, can't blame me if you see a deal that's screaming at you that you can't. Uh, ignore any longer go for it i but agree just be aware be, just be aware of what you're doing 100 percent, 100 percent. um all right great yeah i mean and again that'll put a bow on nfl for a little bit i you know we we, we talked about this last week and stuff we're we're going to keep an eye on the offseason trends um as free agency news comes out any big movement on trades free agency releasings uh you know signings whatever it may be that'll affect the market we'll talk about it 
Um, if we if we if we recognize any you know offseason buys of guys dipping, we'll talk about that too. But for now, we're definitely shifting focus uh, to NBA F1 as that comes comes back around. Obviously, we'll be you know keeping our eye on UFC and uh, baseball as well as if that ever gets off the ground. But I think NBA is going to be our, our our main focus now, uh, starting right now, right, Cody. Exactly. You guys have been patient enough for us. We've been really, 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 really NFL heavy. Obviously, that took center stage with the playoffs and the Super Bowl and the the aftermath that followed from that with such big names being involved, uh, you know, namely Joe Burrow. But Gary's got a little treat for the viewing audience. I mentioned it at the top of the show. If you aren't watching on the Establish the Run, the Establish the Collection YouTube page, please stop listening to this on your podcast feed and go check it out now. It should be up uh, wherever you get your videos, go check it out on YouTube. But uh, just a genuine thank you for you guys tuning in each week, supporting the show. Uh, so as a fun way to kind of kick off a little bit more NBA talk as we head into the home stretch of the season. Gary's got a 2020-2021 Prism retail box that he's going to rip and give away whatever he rips, whatever he decides he wants to give away to our loyal listeners. So all we ask, if you're checking the show out right now on YouTube, just leave us a comment. Tell us what you love about the show. Tell us what you want to see. Leave us a comment. We'll get we'll pull those comments. Whatever Gary pulls here in the next few minutes, we will give away to our loyal listeners, our loyal viewers. So go check it out as Gary gets this thing ready to go. We'll see how his box breaking skills are doing. Yeah, we'll Gary, see. How, how many how many live box breaks have you done for? I've uh, done. Uh, an, I've done zero. Done zero. This will be my first. I've been a part of many. Um, but have never ripped for myself. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, as you said, we're, we're going to do this and we'll talk a little bit about it after at the end about about what we pull and how we'll give it away. Um, but it's going to be YouTube related. So, you know, I know in the past we, there's been a little bit of a delay of getting the episodes up on YouTube from when they were released on audio. We're going to try to, um, you know, get these up at the same time for this week so we can kind of, you know, do this giveaway in a timely fashion for, for next week. So what we're going to do here, um, you know, Prism retail box is like $260. Uh, about still for last year's class, which honestly, to me, when you see these, you're finding these, I think that's a good buy. If you find Prism Retail from 1819, 1920, um, 1819 goes for like 800 bucks, which makes sense. That's Luca year. 1920 goes for like $600. That's Zion Jai year. These are still in the mid 200s range. And this is LaMelo Edwards year. Like, yes, I get circulations a little more. What I like about these, they're, you get 24 packs, a lot of base rookies, which is still pretty cool, but you also get a good amount of silvers. Um, you get one autograph per box, and you have a chance at like the pink pulsar, which is retail exclusive. I think those are out of um, like 45 or whatever. And you get a pair of chance at the green pulsar, which is out of even less, like 20 or, or 30 or whatever it may be. Um, so we're going to rip this now. Uh, bear with us while we rip it. I'm going to go pretty quick because it's 24 packs. I don't want to you know, spend the whole time ripping here. But what I'm going to do is right off the bat, because we don't know what we're going to hit in this thing, I'm giving away this Anthony Edwards base rookie next week, no matter what. And then out of this box, whatever the autograph is, could be a LaMelo silver, could be a Edwards silver, whatever it is, it's going out to you guys as well. So that'll be a separate giveaway. And any Edwards or LaMelo base rookies will also go out of this box. And we'll see. Just let's have some fun. Um, possibly we'll do more. I come from the breaking streets of wearing gloves. Let's protect these cards. If we hit any monsters, I don't want my fingerprints all over them. So we're freaking putting gloves on, baby. Let's do this thing right if we're uh, if we're going to do this at all. So. Gary's, Gary's got the Dexter set up. He's got the, uh, the the saran wrap around in the background. He's ready to do this thing. Yep. Let's get it popping. This is going to be I, fun. I, I, I'm excited to see how well your break viewing and break box doing will translate to you actually doing your own for a viewing audience. Well, we'll see. And I'm, you know, I'm going to get some, some card sleeves open here too, just in case we need those. Um, let's see. I can bring the camera down to the packs. Maybe we'll edit this out. I, I can bring the camera down to the packs or uh, I could just kind of open them. Like, let's see what it looks like. And then we'll decide how we want to do it. Uh, so ripping this right now, you can see fresh, 24 pack box here. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. So I think I'm going to do it this way and we'll just show them on screen here like this. All right. That um, is perfect. The new camera looks great. The cards yeah, look good on the camera. New, let's, new let's camera. Do this hopefully thing. it'll be focused. Uh, so I'm just going to go faster base cards. Yep. All right. So we got our first prism is just Malik Monk. Malik Monk. All right. No, no rookies in that pack. All right. So Jeremy Grant, Nico Mannion's a rookie. Mari Carroll, Blake Griffin, nothing. Gonna go fast. Gonna go try to go fast at least. Chris Dunn, Tyler Hero, Austin Rivers, Silver. Okay. okay. Jackson Hayes. 
Who is your favorite? I mean, is it is it Tyrese Halliburton? Why do I say his name that way? Tyrese Halliburton. Is it Tyrese Halliburton? Halliburton? Is it Tyrese, is Tyrese Halliburton? Halliburton your favorite non Edwards Lamelo rookie from this draft? Um, for me, for like my personal stuff, it's probably quickly. Um, sure, but sure. that makes sense. You know, for for what I'm looking for, I guess it would be Halliburton. I mean, Cole Wiseman is an interesting Wiseman rookie. at all. Wiseman's an interesting buy if you believe in him long term because he's yeah. definitely you know hasn't been on the floor in a while. Uh, a Chua rookie. Um, I think that's a Ben Simmons silver. Yep, Ben Simmons silver. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it would be Halliburton, especially Halliburton, uh, no, especially now that, <laughs> now that he's in Indiana. Um, yeah. I think I think his stuff's actually up, you know, pretty nicely. I, I would say, uh, you know, for, as just as from a long term outlook. Uh, cash wins is Obi Toppin silver. All right. Hey, there we go. You know I'll give that one away. That's a good one. Um, I'll give that one away. I have I got a couple of these to begin with and. Uh, just won the know, dunk contest. Just won the dunk contest. We talk. We're not going to talk about the dunk contest, but just won the dunk contest. We talk about my <laughs> Knicks a lot, uh, obviously, and looks pretty good to me. Maybe slightly off centered, um, left to right, slightly. Yeah. But you know, either way, we'll get this slabbed up. I'm gonna. I mean, slabbed up. We'll get this top loaded. I'm gonna get that out to the people uh, for sure. So that's one giveaway. So we got the Edwards, the Auto, and the Obi Toppin. We're giving away. Um, Malik Beasley, Vassell rookie, Wendell Carter Silver, Tyus Jones. The Obi Toppin raw silver market, obviously all over the place because of you know centering issues that Gary mentioned. Uh, cards will go for a variety of different prices, but uh, five to ten dollar card there with Obi Toppin's with raw silver, silver. Is that right? I mean, to me, that seems like a good buy. Any kind of raw silver, if they look in good condition at five ten bucks for a guy that is still only in his second year, um, yep. is is an interesting buy to me. Um, you know, sometimes I'll go look in that in that range. Like I bought some Jalen Brunson mm-hmm. raw silvers this week, um, just because I thought they were undervalued. If he ends up in a new place, maybe the Knicks next year, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you get single d- digit uh, silver cards, I think that is always a solid buy for sure. Um, Darren Jackson, Theo Mallet on rookie. We got a green Desmond Bain emergent. Some we're going to talk about mm-hmm. a little bit uh, later. Uh, I'd be happy to throw that into a giveaway too, uh, just as far as maybe uh, an extra give boost if the auto is not so good or, or whatever it may be um jj reddick harry giles or jay hampton robert williams nothing great yet ob silver is the best uh card for sure curious what the ob silver goes for in a psa 10 um because i haven't I grabbed that, that for you maybe um james johnson ben simmons gary harris I lied. There must be a pretty low pop on the Obi Top and Silver PSA. Yeah, I would imagine. It's not listed on card ladder right now. I would imagine that the pop's pretty low. Um, Embiid, Denny rookie. Okay. Josh Green, Frank Kaminsky. Uh, Beverly, Carol, Boyan, Ruby, and Devontae Graham. I know this probably doesn't play so great for for podcasting, but at the same time, if we pull something great and we get to give it away to the people, you'll be happy. That's all that matters. Um, all right, I'll try to go faster too. Uh, Conley, Russell Westbrook, Derek White, Eric Bledsoe. Let's get a silver or color rookie. That's what I'm looking for here. And let's get our good auto in here too. That is what I'm looking for. All right, Otto Porter, Marcus Saul. Russell Westbrook, Aaron Holiday. Nothing. Gonna need, nothing. A, need a little last pack magic for yeah, uh, to salvage this box. We got a ton uh, left still. Ramsey, Aaron Neesmith, Tim Duncan. But yeah, let's just get like a base rookie. I want to give out a Lamelo. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, Jokic, Poku. Poku. We like Poku. Marcus Smart, Silver. And Dort. Do we still like Poku? Are we out on Poku? I think <laughs> I think we're probably out on Poku. Um, Dang it. As much as I want to be in on Poku, I think we're probably out on Poku. He just hasn't shown enough uh, that he could be a Derek Jones Jr. Silver. So, so far, our prisms have been crappy uh, yeah. bets besides Obi. Um, yeah, I mean, Poku's just – he's kind of a, like a lost puppy out there. The only thing I'll say with Poku is – the current state of the Thunder, he might get to play a lot down the stretch here. So we'll find out quickly if we're still uh, out on on Poku or not. My guess is we are. Um, but you know, I, you know, he he was like kind of like last year's Seku Dumboya, who yeah. was huge in the hobby. Uh, and I was I fell victim to that too, man. 
Um, looks like we have our auto here. I'll try to sweat it for my first ever sweat. All right. All right. Let's see how. Let's um, see if you've watched enough Isaac Smith Okoro. streams here. Yeah. Right. Isaac Okoro, Joe Harris, Frank Nielakina. Hold on. Let me let me uh, turn it over. You know what? It's a silver rookie auto. Oh boy. So we got oh, that. You know that's oh, pretty baby. good. Okay. Oh, silver baby. rookie auto. We got. Jemias Ramsey, Sacramento Kings. Uh, <laughs> not even the right Kings. But you know what? Not even At the, the right Kings least, player. Still a silver rookie autograph. Um, you know, you could do worse than that. Like we could have gotten like uh freaking Doug McDermott or something. They throw like random, <laughs> they throw like random veterans in here. So uh we'll get that out to the people as well. I understand it's not the best card in the world. Uh, a couple more packs here. Yeah, so Ramsey Silver rookie auto, that'll go out to the people next week. Let's get it in Edwards or Lamelo to finish this out strong. Mitch, there we go, baby. There we got him. We got There's him, all right? So we got a Lamelo base rookie. Um, looks pretty, looks centered. Actually, yeah, it looks really good. So um, we're giving that away next week. So, so far we got four cards to give out. So four comments on the YouTube video. We'll get that out to the people, which I'm excited about. Lamelo um, base raw going anywhere between $25 and $38 over the last 30 days. So I think and you got to feel pretty good too. about that. It might great. So like, you know, I yeah, listen, right. That's on you. If you want to send it out, like I know PSA is doing some economy tiers right now where they'll, uh, you know, they'll, they will take in at the lowest tier. So if you can get that, if you can get that graded for 50 bucks, you know, you, you're, you're definitely increasing, obviously your value yeah, free card graded right. for 50 bucks. If you think it can grade a PSA 10 right now goes for 385. You got to feel pretty good about yeah, that. Right. Exactly. All right. So cool. We got the Lamello and the Edwards to give out. Got the OB, um, and got the Ramsey auto. It's you know not terrible. Could not could terrible. be worse. Could be worse. We got two packs left here. Um, Zion, McCollum, Vassell, Gay. And, and you know the uh, Anthony Edwards PSA ten base market isn't too far behind Lamelo's. To no. be honest with you, three fifty five last sold price. So uh, you know if you think that Ed, uh, Aunt Edwards would grade out as well, another free card that you three hundred fifty dollar net profit from. Not not bad. Not bad. All right. So. Um, yeah, that'll do it. We got Troy Brown here, Ricky Rubio, Kyra Lewis, Gallo. So, all right, we got four cards to give away for you guys next week. And um, yeah, so as I said, hopefully you're watching on YouTube right now. Let me fix the camera up here. We're going to, if all you got to do is comment on this video, that's it. Comment on the video. That's the best way that we can kind of gather names for giveaways because you can't, we can't really do it by like. So just comment anything. Um, could be you guys are ugly. Cody's haircut isn't as nice as you think it is. <laughs> uh, whatever you want, comment it. And we will, um, we will give away these cards. We'll do four separate giveaways at the top next week for these four different cards. A man of the people, Gary, we really appreciate you giving away uh, a retail box of your own. We got the Lamello. We got the Anthony Edwards. We got the OB Top and Silver. And whoever the guy was from the Kings, that's going out. <laughs> Jemias Jim Ramsey. Jemias Ramsey. He may have been cut after the deadline, but I, I, <laughs> I'll say this about him, though, honestly, because he got to play a little bit um, when they made the trade. He's a, kind of a good-looking player. I, he's really yeah. not not... He's aggressive. He's an aggressive, aggressive guard. We don't need to go down a whole Tobias Ramsey rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, he's he's currently not on a team, but he will get another chance. Uh, I'll tell you that much. So with with all of the NBA, all of the basketball talk that we need to get caught up on, I think you're right. We do not need to go down a Jemias Ramsey <laughs> rabbit hole. There's so much basketball for us to get into. We've got plenty of time over the next few weeks and months, especially as we get into playoffs. But coming out of the All-Star break, we thought no better way to kind of get our feet wet get the audience's feet wet with just some quick mid-season awards with a little bit of a hobby twist. So, uh, you know, you've, you've listened to the mid-season MVP, most improved player, rookie of the year awards. We want to do it with, a, with obviously a little bit of a collectibles twist on that. So instead of Gary's MVP award, we'll be crowning the NBA's most valuable card market to this point of 2021. Instead of most improved player, we'll see whose card market has gained the most since the beginning of the season and so on. So, Gary, uh, obviously working with Drew, working with Gallagher, being a part of the ETR NBA team virtually every day of the NBA regular season, you know that your NBA MVP is Nikola Jokic. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> that, and you, you know what? I think Embiid's going to actually win it. Yeah, um, right. But to me, it's Jokic as well. I'm, I'm team Drew on this one. But uh, but Jokic probably doesn't have the most valuable card market in the NBA at this point. Certainly not for 2021. I think there's a he few should. names. He should. He might. He, he, he certainly should. And I know you've got some very nice Nikola Jokic cards on your hands. But 
who's got the most valuable card market thus far in the 2022 season? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's kind of an easy answer. And it's he's going to win most improved player. He was an all-star starter. He's going to probably make an all-NBA first or second team. And he has done everything that we wanted the number one overall pick to do in this class and more. And that's John Morant, right? Um, he has become, you know, he he was kind of the one B darling of the hobby once, you know, that that class before the one we just ripped, the 1920 had come out. And it was such a big deal that there were these two guys in in the in the hobby, and obviously circulations were high, but that's not stopping John Morant um from you know being up pretty much across the board this season, um, from base market all the way through high end. Uh, and it's for good reason. I mean, the guy is just an absolute beast. The Grizzlies have positioned themselves to possibly fight for that two seed in the West. Um, I think there are either two or three right now. And, you know, a lot of that's on the back of one John Morant. He's only, what, 22 years old? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, really crazy what he's doing. The only thing that scares me at all for him is the way he plays and potential injuries. Besides that, no reason to think he can't um, be this kind of force for, for a while. I, I, I am just amazed looking through card ladder just at how much of his product is up. And as you mentioned, pop counts still rising for this guy and price is continuing to rise right alongside it. Uh, I think it is the perfect embodiment of what an uh, NBA MVP card market would look like. John Moran has done more than anyone else this season, I think, to position themselves as a long term hobby name. Yeah, man. And like I mentioned, you know, I'm actually in negotiations right now to sell that tiger stripe we spoke about, Mm -hmm. um, you know, way back when last year. And and, and do I want to sell that card? No, uh, I really don't. Um, It's a pop six. You know, it's one of the one of the highest end prism PSA tens you can have of jaw at this point. But, you know, it's for a card like that and like some high end stuff like this, like National Treasures, RPAs, right? Like for for those kind of cards, you, you have a decision to make if you're a John Morant collector. You either sell them now while he's kind of in this complete, you know, he's the center of the NBA universe, you know, in, in a lot of circles, or you're holding it long term, mm-hmm. right? Because you can't necessarily bank on this stuff going up that much more. Can the can the Grizzlies get to the Western Conference Finals? Maybe. Would we see would we see that stuff? And when I say now, I mean now between now and the playoffs. Would we see that stuff go up a little bit more? Sure, like we saw for Joe Burrow in the NFL. Sure. But if you're not selling right now in this window, while pops continue to go up, even for low, high end, whatever, you're looking at it as a long term investment piece. And that's okay. I'm fine with that. And I'm going to do that with a lot of my jaw. But I do feel the need to offload some of my high end stuff. And luckily, I'm in a position where he's probably my most heavily invested high end um, player of ultra modern. So I can keep a lot and sell a lot and, and kind of do what I do with Burrow, even on a bigger scale. Um, just sold a Spectra RPA this past week, a Marble, uh, which is out of five, it was a BGS 9.5 with a nine auto for 10 grand. Um, probably could have got a little more on it. Honestly, just looking to recoup some, some liquid right now. Uh, you know, talking about off, you know, an off eBay deal on the tiger stripe have been in touch with golden auctions about that tiger stripe. So, you know, definitely going to offload a couple of these really high end cards and I'll keep you guys updated on that. But, um, whatever you want to do with Jara and I won't argue with you, but I'm just telling you for the high end stuff, if you're not selling right now, you're, you're probably looking at that as a long-term piece. It'll be it'll be fun if you go through with that tiger stripe. It will be fun to sweat that out with you, especially if that thing goes uh, at golden. Uh, I'll I just tell saw... you. I'll tell you what offers I have off air. I don't really want to blow yeah, it up no, right that's, now. That's um, fine. But I have uh, some five figure plus, like real high into the five figures plus offers on the card already, which I'm excited. Yeah, about. I bet. And you guys can all see this on card ladder as well. But it's got a card ladder value right now of twenty four thousand six hundred dollars. So that is a a big 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 time card. Last sold for sixteen thousand six hundred on January thirtieth. That's on, um, that's on card ladder yeah that's new man yeah they, uh, they may have updated it's got a uh, a pop that's seven funny last all right so i'll January say i'll 30th. say this. i'll say this my offer's right around there okay um, perfect which perfect. i guess that's why i'm starting to get some okay i didn't realize this was on card ladder this makes sense now because um i was starting to get some offers like in this range which i'm somewhat comfortable with um but yeah you know, I didn't know where this number was coming out of. I know a number I had in mind, but it's because it's on card ladder, which is funny. And the pop seven is new. So that means that there's an extra one added into the pop. It was pop six forever. So some some collectors, some investors are doing a little bit of price discovery via card ladder, seeing that they totally. can get this thing for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And, and you know, ah, man, this is, we could have a whole other conversation on this, but I basically am talking to a guy that lives in my city. Um, where mm-hmm. I could probably get, I could possibly get a cash deal and I don't want the IRS coming after me or anything like that, but, <laughs> um, obviously there are big benefits to doing that. Um, 
I'll keep you updated on what I do with it. That's yes, awesome. very, this this will be a fun sweat. We'll see how this goes over the next couple of weeks, months, however long this may take to broker a deal. But this is this is a good one. This has been a big card, and and I think was a very uh, early part of establish the collection. I think yeah. you flashed that card very early on. Yeah, way uh, back last then. year. So yep. this yep. is a fun one. All right, you mentioned Jaw is is probably a shoe in for actual most improved player. Um, yep. But we've got a different category for the card market most improved card market who's who's gained the most in their hobby value since the start of this season yeah i can give you a bunch of names here um and a couple of that actually would cross over with another category we're going to do in a little bit but let me let me give you um i'll give you a couple honorable mentions leading up to to my my pick here um and for any simons it was definitely not uh, an, an honorable mention for me um out of the 2018-19 luca class um you know has it really just Unbelievable opportunity with with Damian Lillard. And for you guys, I know Portland Trailblazers point guard is completely taken off o- over as their high usage guy. Um, you know, especially since CJ McCollum's been shipped out of town. But he was really even doing it just when when Dame went down. And really, I mean, it's really crazy. It's just like this natural transition. He plays just like those two guys. And I mean, looking at his silver PSA 10 right now, pop of 1100 and rising, up 130% over the last three months. That You could have got that card for, you know, if you were lucky, under 100 bucks. Uh, at the before he started getting big minutes, that card is now up to three hundred fifty dollars. It's the value at three forty six on Card Ladder right now. I've been selling some raw Simon stuff because I just have a ton from that class, the Luca class, which is when I really started, and I've been selling that stuff for for you know for for nice profits. I have some of his lower, um, you know, numbered Prism BGS nine fives, PSA tens. Really bullish on him though. He's, he's a he was a baby when he came into league, like eighteen. So he's also only like twenty two or so, twenty three. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, he checks all the boxes that you want for a, um, you know, hobby prospect. He is a high usage guard, three point shooter, explosive. Um, and you know, is basically given the keys to a rebuilding team once Dame's out of there, which I would imagine is coming over the next year or two. So to me, he's definitely an honorable mention in this category. Um, you have any thoughts on Simons? Yeah, this was a guy that we we talk so often about not being afraid to pull the trigger on sales, right? Right, cards when you're ready to offload when you've when you've made a, a little bit of a profit. This was a guy that I was looking at in the off season uh, that was, as you mentioned, very cheap, and I was being stingy, did not pull the trigger on any purchases, and really kicking myself at this point now that I see how much his card market has moved in the upward direction. Uh, for not buying Anthony Simons, but I, I agree with everything that you mentioned. His card market looks to be extremely hot right now. Yeah, and he's the real deal. Like I see this guy making future All Star teams. Like he passes the eye test in every way. He's got he's got gumption, man. Like he'll take over a game. This this Blazers team is playing with a ton of on you know honestly G leaguers. Like a lot of their six yeah. through twelve guys are not necessarily would wouldn't necessarily be on a lot of NBA rosters. And he has them competing in many games, um, games that the Blazers maybe shouldn't be in. And I love playing him in DFS. I love any chance I get to watch him. Like he he really passed that eye test, which is you know one of the big boxes in, uh, uh, for for. NBA hobby love, you know, going off that job Moran thing. One of the reasons he's so loved is just because of how explosive he is. And Simons has that too. He really does. And so excited to see where he goes because it's, the, you know, sky's the limit. He's basically gotten to learn under CJ and Dame, um, two of the best guards of the last decade. Um, and, and you see flashes of both their games in his game. And, you know, he's so young that I think he's only going to get better. All right. Simons makes the honorable mention. Do you have any other honorable mention names you want to get to before you get to the guy who is uh, taking the award in your eyes at the halfway point? Yeah, this this next one was it was a close one between these two guys for me, but there's just not enough data on for me to call this guy the the ultimate winner here because he comes out of the uh, 15, 16, or is it 16, 17? I guess um, uh, a class, and that's Dejounte Murray. Um, you know, him and the guy I, I pick as the winner here are both first time All Stars, um, point guards, young, explosive. Um, and Murray to me was a big offseason buy for me. And I did not pull the trigger on enough of his stuff yep. as I wanted to. I knew I should have. I knew it. Um, you know, silvers were like three, four hundred bucks before the season, uh, PSA 10. And now they're like seven, eight hundred if you can get your hands on them. Now it's only a pop of 123. Uh, so, you know, totally, um, you know, hard to find, but that's up 103% over the last three months. Um, you know, not many sales over the last you know month or so because it is so sort of low pop. But to me, just as far as the most improved, both on the court, off the court, in the hobby, um, you know, similar type of you know explosiveness. He's like become like a 10k player on DFS for DFS. I mean, that's that's just crazy. Um, those are superstar numbers. 
And um, yeah, I mean, it, it passed the eye test also, uh, you know, nowhere to go but up for that guy. We've kind of been waiting on a little bit of a late bloomer. Like he had his, they gave him a uh, like a, a, a contract extension a couple of years ago, the Spurs did, that people were like, it was pretty more speculative. And now it looks like an absolutely steal of a deal for uh, one of the top young guards in the league. If you roll back to our underdog draft, uh, it was episode 24. I think this was a guy that we drafted. Yeah, we did. This was a guy that we were really excited about his offseason market. And again, yeah, on our season buys episode two, we talked about him. In yeah, general. exactly. Yeah. And, and again, uh, another situation where it sounds like you were as stingy as I was, did not pull the trigger and and totally wish I should have because I had a ton of conviction on this guy just being an absolute star this year. And, and he's been exactly that. Um, you mentioned his base and his silver markets, both up over 100% over the last quarter. So uh, just to do that, it is finally seeing a little bit of hobby love, still really low pop counts from that 2016 prism class, but uh, a guy that from a DFS perspective and from an on court per- perspective that we both get really excited about, just love, love, love his game. Totally. Absolutely. Um, you know, really excited about, uh, you know, what's, what's to come for him. Um, but to me, the winner here, and, and, you know, it's, it's only right that we give this team some, some love, uh, is Darius Garland. And, you know, this one's hard for me because, you know, he, and this is a blue, uh, I have this up on eBay right now for four grand, actually, a blue PSA 10 uh, Prism out of 199. Um, it's hard for me only in the sense that he was picked, um, you know, after RJ. And, yep. you know, that's really to see that we pick our MVP for Ja, we pick our uh, most improved for Garland, who uh. is just carrying this Cavs team on his back, you know, made a first all-star team. Really a floor general. He has the keys to the offense. He's the uh, he's the straw that makes that that stirs the drink over in Cleveland, and and you know he really will continue to to rise. I think here. So um, you know what I wanted to pick him is because there's more data on somebody like him. He's a very interesting case in general because we talked about this in the past as well. How there is no autographs from Panini of Darius Garland, so we're relying heavily on base and refractors and colors to dick to to set his market no patch autos nothing like that he signed on with upper deck i think um so even his base though which is a you know one of those super ultra modern cards pop of 4000 is up 22% over the last 6 months 43% over the last 3 months i mean for that to be almost a $70 card with a pop of 4000 is pretty crazy to me um you know i it, it's really amazing and then you look at some of his rarer stuff obviously um his silver uh, PSA 10 Prism is a pop of over a thousand. Um, sitting in a similar price to that Simon's card at three hundred fifty dollars. Any of his colored stuff is getting up there higher. And the reason I pick him is because I still think there's actually room here. Um, I think you could also put him in the second half risers as well. I think he's uh, nowhere to go but up as as the Cavs are almost certain to make at least get a playoff series. Um, you know, he really is also another young kid that is going to just make a ton of noise in this hobby as the Cavs. Um, assuming LeBron doesn't go back there, which I'm not, I don't think that's going to actually happen. Um, you know, continue this ascent into one of the better young rosters in the league. And yeah, we have Evan Mobley and we have Jared Allen. We have Karis LeVert there now and we have some interesting names. But uh, it's Garland's team and, you know, he's he's a stud man. He's an absolute stud. There was an article published on, I, I just pulled it up on my phone, that was published on June 21st of 2021. And this happened to be before the the real crash of the base market and, and what have you. And it was a huge puff piece on Darius Garland titled, Darius Garland is the NBA's next great point guard developing before our eyes with the Cavaliers. And I read that article and I read about the team's uh, involvement with him and his dedication to being a better player. And I went out and bought as much base product as I could get. I went out and bought as much silver raw that I could get just excited about this guy. And this puff piece just had me nice. had me all in on Darius Garland. And then we get this absolute tanking of the base market. And for me, that's still come out ahead, mostly investing in stuff that I probably shouldn't have been investing in. I probably should have just bought more, want less, uh, less product, but more higher end stuff. For me to still come out ahead after buying Darius Garland when I did, uh, feeling pretty good about myself and, and really couldn't agree more on who's had the most improved card market uh, of the start of this season. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, good. I'm glad we agree there. And, you know, he, he again, I, I think there's room to grow there. And, yeah, one of the few cases where the puff pieces were, were spot on, he was one of our offseason buys once again. So mm-hmm. um, not to toot our own horns there, but, you know, really impressive stuff out of Garland. I'm excited to see where he goes there. So, you know, a trio of young guards for me and Simons, uh, DeJounte Murray and Garland that are in that most improved category for sure. 
Unfortunately, we don't have a lot or really any noteworthy NBA physical product to talk about. So we're going to take this next category a little bit more top shot heavy. Uh, instead of rookie of the year, we're trying to take the, uh, take a look at who is the hottest rookie card market right now. And again, we're, we're not really looking at the physical card world at this point. We're looking more towards NBA top shot. But it actually pretty closely follows on NBA Top Shot, the totally. rookie of the year market right now. Evan Mobley, a clear number one over there on Top Shot. Got a low ask right now of $365 with Cade Cunningham coming in second for 339 And then a big drop off to Scotty Barnes, who uh, we both like in Toronto for $240. The thing that stands out to me now looking at this after we had just talked about NFL all day, is that all of these players have a circulating count of 4,000, right? There's uniformity across the board. You can kind of get an accurate gauge of what a player's market looks like over there. Um, so it does appear that the Top Shot crew is the the Top Shot marketplace is valuing Mobley the same as kind of the betting markets are. As he's a, a runaway favorite for Rookie of the Year on the the improved Cavs team, as we just mentioned with Terry Scarland. Do you have do you see this any differently now? or going forward, or do you think the the physical market will see this any differently than NBA Top Shot currently has it? No, I think it's going to be very similar. Um, I think Mobley and Cade will be a clear one, too. I'm curious to see what happens from there. You know, we see international prospects pick up some steam in these uh, early rookie case, cases when when they're uh, pretty good. So, and, and and for me, just a personal opinion, Giddy would be, Josh Giddy out of the, for the Thunder would be my number three. I think, you know, we talk just overall upside uh, of, of, both statistical production and what they what somebody can mean to a team. I think he's the clear number three from what we've seen so far. Over a Scotty Barnes, you know, Jalen Green's a really hard one to um, you know, evaluate just being on that terrible Rockets team and he's been super inefficient so far. But I would imagine that he's going to be kind of similar to some of our disappointing quarterbacks where you can kind of get him as a cheaper uh, investment option once some of these, you know, better products come out. But I think Kaminga is going to carry a premium um, just given the speculation being on the Warriors, things like that. Giddy as someone that I also think will have a big market, but I'm really going to be looking to invest in. And then uh, Franz Wagner as well in Orlando, I think will kind of not get enough love uh, for, for the production he's shown so far over in Orlando. The one thing that always stands out with these rookie classes to me as we look at them, you know, halfway through their first year or, or through the end of their first year is how many fun names there are and how many names you can talk yourself into for upside, right? You mentioned Giddy and Kaminga and Jalen Green and Fonz Wagner and Io Dasumu, is a, who is a guy that you can yep. get excited about yep. as well. Jalen Suggs, Bones Highland, Alper and Shingun, like all of these names that rank towards the top of the top shot leaderboard are all guys that I could see myself, the wheels are turning a little bit that I could talk myself into uh, getting excited about from a hobby perspective. That will obviously shake itself out. Evan Mobley certainly has demonstrated that he is, uh, I think, the clear-cut number one in this class, but Cade is, is kind of nipping at his heels too. So it will be fun once we finally get some physical products in our hands to see how this whole class shakes out. And if Cade gets himself to all-star level, he'll surpass Mobley from a hobby perspective, just from the difference between guard and ball handler and big. Um, I feel confident saying that. But right. you know, any does, other any other categories? I know you kind of had some off the wall categories, some other categories you wanted to mention as yeah, we head into the I mean, second half. Well, what, I think what we, else you we, got? we talked a little bit about just like six man, you know, which we'll call like in this case, you know, like a, a secondary or an under the radar card market. So I'll just throw out a couple names here. Um, you know, to me, sticking to this Grizzlies thing, man, Desmond Bain, second year player uh, for Memphis. You know, for a while he was considered a borderline all star this season. Just super efficient, does everything well. Um, really, really impressive player scores three point shooter plays good defense. Uh, you know, don't have too many pop numbers in front of us. Cause I don't think a lot of that stuff's been graded yet, but even just his raw silver rookie is like a $40 card right now, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's up 77.83% over the last three months. Um, you know, really, really wild. Uh, you know, before the season, you could have got that thing at like 10 bucks. So, yeah. or, or less, you know, honestly. So, you know, for the bet to be a $40 card, I've been selling some of the Desmond Bain raw stuff. I have, I sold a choice rookie, like the blue, yellow, green for like $90 last week. Uh, you know, well-deserved, um, you know, kind of under the radar market for, for a, a rising young star that can, you know, might be kind of, you know, um, you know, Jaws partner in crime over there for, for a while. Obviously, Jaron Jackson is is over there too, but I, I'm more excited about Bain personally over there. And then, you know, guys that I just think are still kind of under the radar, um, you know, maybe have a upwards arrow for, for the rest of the season. Uh, Pascal Siakam, man, I love that guy. Getting no love again and 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 in the hobby that is. And, you know, we talk about that with, with bigs, but the thing with him is if you really watch him, 
he's kind of like a point center at times. And, you know, we were talking about this guy two and a half, three years ago as a top 20, top 25 player in the NBA. And guess what? He's that again. Like he's been insane over the last two months for Toronto, um, completely putting the team on his back. I never lost faith on him. I mean, he was a weird, it was really a weird situation for Toronto last year when they were playing out of Tampa, um, you know, from the bubble on, he, I think he struggled a little bit, but I think he's a really strong buy now. He's stay out of the same class as Ajante Murray. So the pops are not crazy that 2016, you know, his base is only a 500 pop. I like that. And that's down, man. This stuff's down 24% over the last three months. Like if that's a $40 card, I love that buy. I love the silver buy as well. Only a $230 card on a pop of 190. Um, I think this guy has a chance to be a multi-time all-star. Toronto is really going nowhere, but up with a really strong young core. That's just someone that I think is undervalued uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. And, um, you know, Donovan Mitchell to me is is also undervalued within that tier of, you know, superstars, all-star type players. You know, his um, silver... PSA 10 prism. I just bought one yesterday, my first one, uh, because I just I thought that these were undervalued. Only a pop of 559. So let's compare this to John ja Morant. Uh, his silver PSA prism is a pop of 17, uh, 1276, and that's a $1,700 card. So it's double the amount of cards, a little over double, and it's 1700 Donovan Mitchell's is a 550 silver for the silver, 560, and is a 600. Their card ladder values it as a $660 card. I bought it for 640 yesterday. Um, I, I absolutely love that card. Uh, I really do. I think that has so much room because, you know, he's been on a winning team for a while. I don't know how that's going to shake out in Utah, but he's a winning player with a lot of improvement in his game still, yet he's still one of the top scorers in the league. Um, I, I, I can see him getting into a bigger market. I see a lot of room for growth there. And he's a killer, man. He's got the killer winning attitude. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him on a championship team at some point here in the future. So really like that buy as kind of an under the radar, uh, kind of arrow pointing up second half season guy. I love you bringing up these 2016, 2017 guys, this pre, you know, ultra, ultra modern stuff with the 2018 pop counts that went nuclear. Uh, we've seen that those names are carrying more hobby love just because that's when a lot of the people got into it. Everyone's excited about the new young prospects and what they may become. But Donovan Mitchell, man, what a baller that dude is and, and so much more room to grow not only in his card market, but just in his game on the court and, and, and also, you know, what may come of his future. So love, love you bringing him up. I know Pascal was a guy that you talked about in the off season as well as a potential buy. And, and it still rings true. I think he's showing as much as you want him to show on the court for you to continue remaining optimistic about him. So I, I, I just, I love the 2016, 2017 and, and the pre 2018 shouts from you. Yep. Yep. Those, and yeah, those would be my, my buys in the second half of the season too. I mean, a couple guys that I would say have arrows pointing up in the second half also like the rookie class as that stuff comes out. I mean, I, I think are interesting to look at, you know, as those markets establish themselves, especially as sell, as sales, but um, you know, other guys I'm looking at, I think Luca's interesting to look at here in the second half. I mean, he's, he's back to being Luca. Um, he's in shape. He looks great. Um, one of the top five day players in the league. What I'm looking at for Luca, though, like, again, we talk about the crazy pops and stuff with the rookies. Like, I think some of his second-year silver stuff is really undervalued. Um, stuff like this, like his hollow optic second-year silver or his um, PSA 10 prism second-year silver. We've seen that stuff have value in the past, and I don't know how much it will continue to in the future. But I do think that those kind of cards are getting completely overlooked. We're not talking about a base card here. There's still a silver, still a second-year. Um, and, you know, those are kind of a mid-tier option entry point, um, you know, for, for a lot of people. So I think that's really, really interesting. Second year stuff for him and Trey, um, you know, as as kind of a you know something to look at uh, is is all I would say. This was a fun way to get back into the NBA hobby a little bit, and as I mentioned off the front, getting myself caught back up into the NBA streets after being uh, having my nose deep in the NFL showdown stuff. So I am highly, highly excited to continue checking out the ETR NBA DFS stuff to get me caught back up, and also continuing to talk to you on and off air about all of your NBA hobby buys and sells. This was a ton of fun, man. I think adding the uh, visual cues on YouTube was a lot of fun. Thank you all if you're checking out the show on YouTube right now for hopping over here, taking the time to leave a comment. Uh, Gary's first box break live, I think, went incredibly well. He looked like a true professional with the gloves, <laughs> with the camera setup. It was it was all very well done. We will get those cards out to you guys that take the time to comment uh, and, and leave us some encouraging words of love. 
uh, hopefully not making fun of the sports clip haircut that I just received a few days ago. <laughs> Was it a sports clips? <laughs> no, actually, funny thing is, it's my wife. She used to be a hairstylist. Get out of here. Uh, so she does wow, incredible she work, man. She crushes I, I, it. I am I am super lucky to to be married to a hairstylist to keep me. That's looking, an unbelievable haircut. Wow, looking much better than I, I I ever should really. Who has it better than you, Cody? Main. I love it, man. All right, we'll leave it there for Gary. I am Cody. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the return of hoops, everyone.